What's going on, everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel. This is one of my favorite videos. We get to do every offseason. This is ahead of next week's NFL free agency, my Philadelphia Eagles dream offseason. So if you're an Eagles fan, buckle up. We're going to have some fun here. We're going to quickly break down the roster. I've broken down all of the team needs, in my opinion, to tier one, tier two, and tier three needs. I got a bunch of players we're going to talk about. I'm going to try to get through the tier three and tier two needs quickly. Because obviously we're going to pivot to the tier one needs, which is going to go into free HC, because that is where we're going to spend our money. And in classic Philadelphia Eagles fashion, I need to interject here real quickly. I recorded this video on Friday. Good stuff. But of course, Saturday morning, this video was supposed to come out Saturday afternoon. News has been dropping like wildfire for the Philadelphia Eagles. Up first is not the biggest news. It is Brandon Graham coming back to the team on a one-year, $4 million deal, which I talked about a little bit later on in the video that this seems like a foregone conclusion. It is time for him to finish his story here, and I really, you know, it looks like you know, Fletcher Cox might be retiring on, on the same wavelength that Jason Kelsey decided just kind of cash out. So it, it would stink to have three, the big three, kind of retire all in one offseason. So it's good that Brandon Graham is returning. However, there's bigger news at stake right now. We get this bombshell. So BG, that's good. I like having that veteran back in the locker room for sure. And then on top of the fact that Hassan Reddick has reportedly been on the trade block, which we will talk about in this video, but today the news dropped that Josh Sweat has also been on the trade block. And the Philadelphia Eagles are looking to aggressively pursue Bryce Huff in free agency, who's been a really nice pass rusher for the New York Jets, only 25 years old, grades out well in terms of pressures and all that stuff. But he still has only been a career rotational pass rusher. And you're clearly the gambling that it is now time for him to be a starter. And he's going to be even better, which is definitely how he rose to move. I just did not see both of Josh Sweat and Hassan Reddick being up on the trade block. Now, logic would say, you know, if you get rid of one of them and you go and you try to get younger with Bryce Huff, that is a Howie Roseman type move. However, because you got Jeff McClain, one of the more OG Eagles beat reporters, not the biggest fan, but he comes in with this tidbit, that it is not in either-or situation. From He understands the Eagles can move on from Riddick and Sweat. They will if they get two different offers coming in, and they'll be aggressive in how they replace them. I don't know if that's just Bryce Huff. I don't know if they're keeping tabs on Brian Burns in Carolina because you get rid of both these guys, that is going to free up a substantial amount of salary cap. Clearly, they are high and optimistic that Nolan Smith is going to take a gigantic leap into year two. He played some of his best football down the stretch, which makes sense. And, I, I you know... I don't know. It just, it just, I'll just say it feels weird that if you tell me somehow, some way, we end last season with Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat, two proven pass rushers who definitely had down years, but everyone on the defense sucked, right? I think it's fair to just be like optimistic that Reddick and Sweat, if they're on this roster, we'll put it together with Sangio. Well, we end last year with Reddick and Sweat, and we start this year with Nolan Smith and like Bryce Huff. Definitely a, a shock. Here's a very quick look at Bryce Huff, just because this is the only time I'm going to talk about this video, because it's all brand new, it's coming to light. Uh, you got the Nerdalytics going with him. I mean, he has had some decent production. I think he had like eight sacks this year, but it's very much like Brandon Graham. Remember, Brandon Graham wasn't getting sacks, but he was always a PFF darling, and he always had the things that weren't sacks, uh, you know, at a, at a high level, an elite level. That's kind of what you're getting here uh, with Bryce Huff, but you're more so, he's 25 years old. You're getting a guy that's been a part of a deep rotation there with the New York Jets, you're probably not going to pay. He's definitely going to be cheaper than Josh Sweat and Hassan Riddick if you're looking at it from that standpoint. So, you know, the gamble that Vic Fangio say this guy here is a full-time starter is going to be better than Josh Sweat or Hassan Riddick. I guess that's what you get when you get someone like Vic Fangio that, you know, he knows what he needs. Here's a very quick look at Bryce Huff just because this is the only time I'm going to talk about this video because it's all brand new. It's coming to light. Uh, you got the Nerdalytics going with him. I mean, he has had some decent production. I think he had like eight sacks this year, but it's very much like Brandon Graham. Remember, Brandon Graham wasn't getting sacks, but he was always a PFF darling, and he always had the things that weren't sacks, uh, you know, at a, at a high level, an elite level. That's kind of what you're getting here uh, with Bryce Huff, but you're more so, he's 25 years old. You're getting a guy that's been a part of a deep rotation there with the New York Jets. You're probably not going to pay. He's definitely going to be cheaper than Josh Sweat and Hassan Riddick if you're looking at it from that standpoint. So, you know, the gamble that Vic Fangio say this guy here is a full-time starter is going to be better than Josh Sweater or Hassan Reddick. I guess that's what you get when you get someone like Vic Fangio that, you know, he knows what he needs. And then we're going to finish up with a seven-round mock draft of the Philadelphia Eagles. And the mock draft is going to go hand-in-hand -hand with how I think and how I would personally go after free agency. 
So it's not necessarily my favorite Eagles mock draft. It's more so a mock draft if they handle their business in free agency, how they're going to be able to supplement the rest of the roster. So Philadelphia, take a look at the roster. Well, just going to acknowledge this is sad. No more Jason Kelsey. But I feel pretty good about Cam Jurgens because he was the handpicked successor by Jason Kelsey to be the new center for the Philadelphia Eagles when he hung him up. So I feel pretty good about that spot. Now, looking at the rest of the roster, uh, Tier 3 needs. So this is very much the lower end of the totem pole. Uh, I got wide receiver depth on the outside because if A.J. Brown and or Devontae Smith ended up getting injured, I would be concerned about our depth. Like, look, we got Nada, Harris, Watkins, Herbert, who was like a converted tight end. Not a lot of depth there. Now, I don't know how much I would spend at this position, but I would just be slightly concerned. I, I think an outside wide receiver, I was kind of looking at available free agency. I, I think... LaVisca Chanel was an interesting name just because he was a guy that we were reportedly interested in when he was coming out of uh, coming out of college. More of a gadget player, though, but it does bring, you know, an interesting athletic profile, and he's definitely a buy-low player after how things kind of broke down there in Carolina. But I do think outside wide receiver, I wouldn't hate grabbing someone a little bit later in the free agency cycle or maybe a little bit later in the draft that has upside, the play on the outside. Uh, running back depth is another spot here. Not We're going to talk about RB1 in a little bit. But even after that, get someone in free agency RB1. Gainwell's still there. After that, though, do we feel good about the rest of the running back room? Uh, we paid Davis Price, which I believe was like, I, I think the report was like the most guaranteed money for a future contract. So obviously they're pretty high on him. But I would say, like, you know, Boston Scott's still out there a little bit late in free agency, which he probably will be. Wouldn't hate bringing him back. He gets the offense. Another tier three need would be quarterback two spot. I like Tanner McKee. I think most of us were impressed with him in the preseason, but I just don't think you give him the job right away without any competition. Now, I think you could look at, you know, we got Tyler Huntley, Sam Darnold, Jacoby Brissett. All those guys are veteran quarterbacks that could potentially come in. But honestly, I am personally a little sick of Philadelphia always having this mentality to pay decent money to a backup quarterback. I get it. You know, we, with Nick Foles and all these other, going back to Jeff Garcia, we've always valued the backup quarterback. But when you have such a good roster, such an expensive roster, it always stings a little bit having a guy that ideally if Jalen Hurts plays all these games, he's just, that's so much money that could go elsewhere. So I, but I do think we probably should look at competition for McKee for that quarterback two spot. And the last spot for tier three is edge depth. Because right now when you look at the edge rushers, obviously a big question mark for the Philadelphia Eagles are, what are they going to do with Hassan Reddick? I personally think unless the market is outstanding, which I don't think it is, you just extend him. He is still one of the best pass rushers in the NFL, top 10 pass rusher, and you're probably going to get pennies on the dollar right now from these teams because of his age. I think we find a way to keep him. And honestly, if they find a way to keep him, that's going to lower that salary cap hit because you're going to be able to kick that down the road a little bit further. So that could work out well for the Philadelphia Eagles. It seems like Brandon Graham's coming back for another year. We got Aquara, who's a decent role player for the uh, Detroit Lions. Josh Sweat, Nolan Smith. I still, though, think we should look and bring in a little bit of edge rush depth. So what I kind of talked about was for sure bringing back Brandon Graham. I think Andrew Van Ginkle would be a little bit more on the expensive side, but he had a huge year last season, ended up finishing with an injury for Vic Fangio down in Miami. I think he, probably you bring him in if things don't go well with Hassan Reddick and contract negotiations, but I definitely think Andrew Van Ginkle would be a very interesting edge rotational hybrid type player for this defense. But that is it for the Tier 3 needs. Quickly now, going to the Tier 2 needs for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think offensive tackle, getting a swing tackle. Looks like Jack Driscoll is probably going to bounce. We got big Fred Johnson behind Mylotta. I like him, Gator Bias. But I, I would honestly think Big V. Big V is hitting the open market. I'm actually going to talk about him as well in terms of an interior lineman at that right guard spot because that's where he's been playing for the Detroit Lions. But I think bringing back Big V, who played his best football here under Jeff Stoutland, and he's going to be cheap. I think that is a really nice get. Uh, to bring back for our depth. I have defensive line just because the reports right now is Fletcher Cox is leaning towards retirement in all-time Eagle. But if he dips, that means, you know, we got Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, Milton Williams. Very excited about the upside there. I think Marilyn Tui Pelotu is also a really solid run defender. But outside of that, then you're kind of left. Thomas Booker, No Ellis, Ojomo. He looked all right, a little flat. I think maybe getting a veteran at defensive tackle would be someone that I would potentially consider. Tier Tart, who's a free agent. Uh, played some good football for the Tennessee Titans. Come off a little bit of a down year, but really before that period, he had a two, three-year stretch where he's one of the more underrated D tackles in the league. So you might be able to get a little bit of a value hit there uh, at defensive tackle. I have inside linebacker three. 
So it's looking, and I just get the vibe that the Philadelphia Eagles are higher on Nicobe Dean than the fan base. Seems like some of the fan base is slowly checking out on Nicobe Dean a little bit. I think personally, Harry Roseman has him as a starter on his depth chart as they're entering this offseason. So I think we got to kind of do the same there. Uh, we got two really good athletes in Brandon Smith and Ben Van Summer on the roster, but not proven whatsoever. So what I would say is maybe some cheap linebacker help. Ideally, we're actually going to get to a point where we talk about uh, another starting linebacker. But I think even with Nicobe Dean, and we'll say a free agent here, you need to have some depth. So I have Zach Cunningham coming back. I think I thought he was solid when he was out there. We definitely felt him when he wasn't on the field. He was a miss. Uh, you also have Anthony Walker Jr. or Jerome Baker. Jerome Baker just got released from the Miami Dolphins. Had a solid year um, under Vic Fangio last year. He was just kind of overpaid. He was, he was a solid linebacker that was getting paid like a linebacker that was going to take his game to another level, and he just never did that for the Miami Dolphins. So that would be a guy to consider. This is my hot take of this entire video. I have safety as a tier two need. Now, the safety market is ridiculous right now. I think Philly should be aggressive and maybe getting an upgrade. I, I just think Reed Blankenship and Sidney Brown, obviously Sidney Brown's going to be coming off an injury. So maybe having someone, because is he going to be ready week one kind of deal? I think Sidney Brown and Reed Blankenship can be starting safeties in this league. I'm, I, I'm not saying that that shouldn't be a position we go after and be aggressive at, but... I don't. I like our two safeties maybe more than the fan base is considered. I think Reed Blankenship absolutely is a starter. We do not need to upgrade over him. The question mark comes to Sidney Brown. Now, with Sidney Brown, I think if you kind of view him more as a defensive back, he could be kind of like our Avante Maddox. We just released Avante Maddox, which sucks. Just couldn't stay healthy to save his life. I think Sidney Brown could be that versatile DB. That could play everywhere. He can play nickel. He can play a little bit of box safety. He can play deep safety. He can kind of just be that hybrid defender, gets on the field that way. And if that's the case, absolutely go and get a safety. Big names hitting the market, though. It's Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, Jeremy Chin, Cam Curl, Xavier McKinney. I got Jordan Whitehead, who I wanted last year. And the big news, well, Jordan Porter just got released. Veteran, originally started his career in Philadelphia. But the big news is Justin Simmons hitting the open market. He was a guy that we wanted at the trade deadline instead of Kevin Byard. Just too expensive. He got released. Played his best football under Vic Fangio. I just think it's going to be a little expensive. little expensive to bring him in. Looking at his market value right now, like, that ain't cheap. $11 million, When you only were, you know, we don't got a whole lot that we're working with. But he is clearly, like, the big target, I think, right now for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, he's also going to be the most expensive. There's no way that Cam Curl or Xavier McKinney or Chauncey Gutter Johnson is going to cost this amount. But he'd be awesome. He definitely would be awesome. I also would like a reunion with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I thought our defense lost a dog mentality when he left the building. Now, he's coming off. There's no projected contract for him, but he's coming off a $6.5 million deal. He, you know, he might be still in that ballpark because he got hurt last year. I would love to bring him back. Honestly, even if we got Justin Simmons, I would love to bring him back. I would love to have him on this roster again in some way, shape, or form. I don't personally think this is like a bridges were burned type situation. But I obviously there's a little bit of Florida Gator bias, and he was one of my favorite players coming out of Florida. But like I'll just I just go back to that whole Debo Samuel, James Bradbury thing. Like the no one stood up for Brad. I get it, okay? Bradbury cut sucks. Right? Debo wasn't wrong. But like no one stepped, no one it felt like no one had his back. And you know for a fucking fact, John to Gutter Johnson like would have been swinging on somebody. And I, I think we really missed that. But ultimately, if we're talking about safeties right now, CJ GJ was my top guy until Justin Simmons became available. I now think that is definitely going to be a top target for Harry Roseman and company. And the last of my tier two needs is punter. Uh, I think we could just probably bring back Brayden Mann, honestly. I thought he did a pretty good job. Probably won't be very expensive whatsoever. You know, no issues with him holding on special teams. But we currently are without a punter. Could look towards the draft. Torrey Taylor, uh, Rekow from BYU are two big name punters. Probably would need to spend like a fifth, sixth round pick. I think we, you know, could do that for sure. But probably... The market for Braden Man is not going to be extreme enough that Howard Roseman can't get him back on a reasonable short-term deal. So now it is time for the in-depth part of my free agency projections. And that is Tier 1 needs for the Philadelphia Eagles. Currently, we are projected right now, we have about $43 million in salary cap. And the only thing that right now is like expected is if we keep us on Reddick, we are going to have more available salary cap this year. Like People are saying if we get Reddick, we're probably going to have closer to $50 million dollars. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to be kind of operating within the budget of 42. So we're going to take away 11 right away for Justin Simmons. I think that is going to be definitely a direction the Philadelphia Eagles go in. So now pivoting to my Tier 1 needs. We're going to start on the offensive side of the ball, and it is slot wide receiver. Quez Watkins, even though we are a Quez Watkins channel here, 
that supported him at Madden. Just couldn't get the job done. And I think when I'm looking at slot wide receivers, I think the draft is going to be a great spot to get them. There are three wide receivers I love in the draft that could go in that slot position. Looking at the draft, in terms of slot, Ladd McConkey here at 38 would be a dog. Ricky Pearsall at 55 and Malachi Corley at 60. Those would be, th that'd be my, my first, you know, you'd have to spend one of our second round picks, which is maybe a little expensive given the fact that we do have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith on the roster. But I think this just completely would open up the offense and you get long-term cost control playmaking ability in Pearsall, Corley. Honestly, and all those guys can pr play on the outside. They're outstanding route runners and they're all pretty damn good athletes. So it wouldn't be fair necessarily to put them all in the box of purely a slot, but that's how they would project in our offense. I think personally, coming to improve in the slot position, I would look at the draft. But if we want some free agents... Outside the building, I think Braxton Berrios could be a nice veteran. Plus, he gives you a little bit of juice on special teams to compete with Britton Covey. But I think if we're going free agency route, I'd bring back Zacchaeus. Dog, loves the offense. Him and Sirianni are boys. When his number was called upon, made plays for us last season. I think underrated. I think most of the fan base appreciates what he brought to the offense. Again, another player that I don't think would be very expensive whatsoever to bring back. Only money you'd have to bring back on a one-year deal. But I think he outright... With maybe a little more Britton Covey out on offense, should be able to cover the slot spot, but it still is a big-time need for the Philadelphia Eagles. The next spot is interior line. We need a guard. Opeta has been a guy, but now that Cam Jurgens is going from starting right guard inside to center, I think we do need definitely need to shore up that right guard spot. Tyler Steiner, the third-round pick last year, we all can hope that that is where he's going to project. We all need to trust Jeff Stoutland. So that is best-case scenario, but if they do want to go out and look for a guy outside the building at right guard. I think one is Big V, who we just talked about, knows the offense, played guard at Detroit, even though when he was here in Philadelphia, it was more of a swing tackle. That could be an option. Or what about a legacy player? We got John Runyon Jr. Obviously, his dad's one of the best tackles in franchise history. He's played guard. He's played tackle. Brings some versatility. And honestly, he's just been solid. Seems like he's just been like an okay guard. But anytime you get a guy like that, that could just be a fun get could get coached up by Stout. Pretty much any offensive lineman, honestly, that comes here that we show interest in, you almost need to feel good about because that means they got the thumbs up from Jeff Stoutland. But I think either Runyon or Big V, if we want to look outside the ability to compete with Tyler Steen for guard, would be where I'd want to go. And our last tier one need on the offensive side of the ball is running back one. DeAndre Swift, I'll be honest, he would be like my top target. He is my top guy that I want to bring back. I thought last year he proved himself. I also think, given the context of the running back market here in free agency, he's going to be the best bang for your buck. Any other running back that's above him, that you would say, like, oh, yeah, maybe he's a little bit better than DeAndre Swift. You got 10.5 for Josh Jacobs. We're not paying that. You got 6.5 for, I'll say this, 6.5 for Pollard, which is very much in the ballpark right now of DeAndre Swift. That could just be interesting because of his connection with Kellen Moore, our offensive coordinator. You also know, for you know, as much as we just talked about, we're a Quez Watkins Madden fan channel. Tony P's been a dog for us as well. Coming, getting him away from the dark side, bringing him to Philadelphia, I would be in on Tony Pollard. However, I thought we saw last year with the Dallas Cowboys, Tony Pollard struggled being like the guy versus DeAndre Swift, who I think most Eagle fans are like, he's the guy. Why aren't we giving him more touches? I think DeAndre Swift, and the big knock against DeAndre Swift, it just couldn't stay healthy. Stayed healthy last year. Maybe that was in part with how he used him, how we didn't feed him like a true bell cow. But right now, when it comes to the running back spot, the big name link with Philadelphia is Saquon Barkley. Now, make no mistake about it, I am a big Saquon Barkley fan. He is still, to this day, probably the second best college running back I've ever seen in my, in my time. I think an element to Saquon Barkley is obviously his availability. He's an injury-prone player. But is he injury-prone because he plays eight games a year on the worst field in sports? Like, if he goes somewhere else... Are those injuries going to become a little bit less of a problem? And when you look at DeAndre Swift, what is the negative of DeAndre Swift? He can catch the football, great vision, good speed, pass protection sucks. Like DeAndre Swift is always off the field in third down. That's why we had uh, a lot more, uh, you know, rotation behind him. Be it Boston Scott coming in, be it uh, Kenny Gainwell coming in. Saquon Barkley is pretty damn good at pass protection. He would be the complete running back. I would, I would entertain Saquon. Not for that price. Like I, I think that's going to be one of those situations Saquon's going to want to have to come to Philadelphia. If he wants to go to the highest bidder, it's not going to be here. But I think Philly can make a competitive offer. And if I'm Saquon, there is an element to like, A, I want to win. B, I want to be compensated fairly. 
But, like, it must be nice, the idea of playing behind the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line and, like, actually, like, having a chance, not just running to a brick wall time and time again. But I think while I would be on board with the Saquon signing, I think the fact of the matter is you could get DeAndre Swift and then, again, like, that difference in between DeAndre Swift and Saquon Barkley, I don't think it's that gigantic. And the difference in contract, you're going to be able to pay a linebacker. We're going to be able to bring in a depth linebacker or, or an, you know, a buy-low type player with maybe some high upside if we get Swift. So it'll be Swift and a player or we get Saquon Barkley, I think you, know, you might get a little bit more bang for your buck going DeAndre Swift. But I'll say at the end of the day, if we end up getting Saquon, pretty damn happy about it. If we end up getting DeAndre Swift, really damn happy about it. Now, we wanted to supplement running back in the draft, which could be a high risk, but I think it's a decent draft to need a running back. Jonathan Brooks out of Texas coming off an injury, but dog and known strength is his pass protection. Blake Corum, Trey Benson tested very well, number 77. My favorite running back, though, in terms of value, is Braylon Allen at 80. He's 20 years old. He is 235 pounds. Very good athlete. Not, maybe not S tier. I'm thinking about, like, in terms of RAS. We talk about that a lot, especially in mock drafts. I don't know if he'd be a 9 RAS. Probably in that. But I think anytime you get a running back that's 20 years old, that is it. I just stylistically he is a powerhouse a brick shit house power he is insane he is built like a freaking uh, he's josh jacobs he's built like josh jacobs but unlike josh jacobs who was built like tarzan run like jane braylon allen is all tarzan he is my top get obviously protected right now at 80 i would say like there's a shot you might be able to get him that 97 we might be able to get him the third round that is my best case for that spot now i have five tier one needs we've talked about slot interior running back one i have two left on the defensive side of the ball and up first is inside linebacker i think nicobe dean should be positioned as inside linebacker too i don't think you start with him with the first name on the team sheet the bad news in my opinion is i think the free agency market for inside linebacker is not good at all i'm not a fan of it look at the players that are available i i i don't you know not if, like we got willie gay here who's decent right decent Nothing great. And then when you look at what he is expected to get paid, I'm not paying him $7 million. That is very expensive, right? So then you kind of get, and you got uh, Devin White at the top. Oh, yeah, he's only been a liability. Absolutely not. Josie Jewell, you got some veterans, Jordan Hicks. I, Patrick Queen's a big name. I'm terrified of Patrick Queen. First of all, that he's going to get paid elite linebacker money. But he was a guy that, like, Raven fans were like, Kind of a bust. And then they finally spent big money to bring Roquan Smith in, and then he starts playing well. I would, I'm would. i not saying he's a bust. I'm not saying that he's not going to thrive elsewhere. I think he's maybe the most risky big-name free agent on the entire market because you don't know if he's good or if he was good because he was with Roquan Smith. And if he's out by himself, he has to go back to being the guy. He might be the player that was incredibly underwhelming with the Baltimore Ravens. So I would not want... To be on the hook for that amount of money for that amount of risk. So I think if I'm looking for a linebacker, honestly, I think Lamonte David. He's aged gracefully. He's not showing any signs of slowing down. You could still pivot and get a young linebacker in the draft and just not have to throw them to Wolves. Lamonte David, sure hand. Ain't no, in a perfect world, we're not signing all these veterans. But I think in terms of the linebacker, he's the safest get. He definitely probably wants to go to a contender, right? Which Philadelphia is. And, I mean, he'd be pretty damn good in a Vic Fangio scheme. So I think he is easily the only desirable guy, the only name I have here for Philadelphia. If we want to go and dress the linebacker spot, unless there's a trade out there, I would rather go Levante David. Looking at the draft, I think this might be our best shot. Because, again, Levante David might be a little expensive, even though I'd love to have him in the building. And even if you bring in Levante David, I still would probably get a linebacker early because he's only going to be a Band-Aid, a short-term option. Looking at the top names, the one thing I can kind of pat myself on the back is I had Peyton Wilson as my linebacker one all the way. He's been kind of like in that number two, number three spot. But after the combine, at 6'4", he has the best production in all college football at linebacker spot. 6'4", 235, he ran a 4'4'4", tested, showed out, balled out. The big concern with him is the, red, uh, the medical. Uh, ha has had some injuries for sure. You have Edrin Cooper as a dog. Now, the only thing with Edrin Cooper is there's some reports that teams might view him as a pass rusher because he has some traits like that. He's really long. Has some good uh, sack production, uh, being able to make plays in the backfield, which is not a knock against him. I, I would be all in. But there's a shot that he might just not be the guy we need right now on the defensive side of the ball. So Peyton Wilson, absolutely. We get in the mock draft. Come pick 50-53. We're going to try to target him. I think Colson solid. Jeremiah Trotter Jr., legacy player. I know he's a big name for the fan base right now. Really wish he tested because that is the red flag for me. It was like, is he athletically 
a guy that's going to be a three-down linebacker in the NFL? Or is he going to be kind of like a sub-rotational player? Tape looks pretty good, even though I, I hate to say it. Barrett Carter, the other Clemson linebacker, might have been a little more impressed. I, there's no way to, to not say I wouldn't love Jeremiah Trotter Jr. being on the Eagles. However, I wouldn't overpay. I think, honestly, his draft trajectory could be very similar to Kobe Dean, where a lot of people think the name should get drafted early, starts to fall a little bit. Could be like that Nicobe Dean Keely Ringo pick this year for the Philadelphia Eagles. He just falls to the right amount of spot that Howie goes and grabs him. But for my money, Peyton Wilson is the guy. And in the perfect world, that is the guy we end up at IRL. He's like probably my number one favorite target I want to see the Eagles get. Peyton Wilson, linebacker, NC State. And the last need for the Philadelphia Eagles is outside corner. Right? Now, you just... You got Slay. Right? Starter. You got Keely Ringo. Looked pretty promising. Would love to see him honestly get an opportunity to start. You're not giving him the position outright. All right? You got the nickel. I think, you know, he hasn't played a lot of nickel. It's fair to assume that is where Isaiah Rogers is probably going to end up. I could see, though. I mean, James Bradbury wasn't brutal when he played nickel. So, like, I, you know, I could see them go on Isaiah Rogers. A little bit undersized, but a great athlete. You put Slay on one side, Rogers on the other. You move Bradbury into the nickel. You have Ringo be first off the depth, but just even even if that's how they kind of the dust settles at corner, you still need to get younger the spot. Bradbury's not getting any younger, Slay's not getting any younger, so outside corner is a big time need for the Philadelphia Eagles. However, free agency, butt cheeks, absolute butt cheeks. There is, you know, it's not good. I mean, I'm looking at this when I went through it. There's players that I liked in college. I like Bryce Hall. I like the Meek Robertson. Uh, you know, it's those are de those are definitely bot more bottom of the barrel type players. But as you go up, I mean, Sean Bunting is like a zone corner. He's only 26. I mean, what is his what is his projected market value right now? It's probably what five million, four million, six point seven. Even that's expensive. Jesus. Uh, you know, Kenny Moore in the nickel. That was always an English kind of link with us. But, again, I, I, you know, how much do we want to reinvest in nickel? Kendall Fuller is a good zone corner. But he's also, you know, a little bit more of a veteran. Uh, Darius Williams, zone corner, a little bit more of a veteran. Like, I mean, what's the what's the projected cap? I'm, I'm guessing it's probably 10 mil plus for both these guys. So, it's very expensive for guys that kind of fall into that line of, like, Band-Aid type players. And is that really what we need? I think the best chance of Philadelphia getting that big-time corner would be the tag-and-trade scenario with the Jarius Need the Kansas City Chiefs. I was hoping he'd hit the market. If he hit the market, he would be my top need. Just dog, uh, absolute baller. It looks like it'd probably cost you one of our second-round picks to get him, and then you'd have to pay him a lot of money. And he's not, you know, sometimes you get these corners that are 25, 20. He's 27, so he's a little bit older than you would like to, you know, what his prime, you get three years. He's probably looking for a four-year deal. But I think if Philly wants to prioritize corner, like, this is the guy. It's it's Legereus, need or bust, or else we have to pivot towards the draft. But we're looking at the draft. I like the corners this year. I like the top-end corners. I'd be fine, honestly, with any of the top four at pick 22. Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. Don't scout the helmet. He is ridiculous. He is a big-time player. Uh, in terms of, like, small, like, you know, Sauce Gardner. Sauce Gardner, Cincinnati, even though, yes, Cincinnati kind of went on that run. There was still this, like, Cincinnati. Give me a corner from Bama, Clemson, Ohio State, not Cincinnati. And now no one's saying that. Sauce Gardner's not one of the best young corners in football. I think Quinion Mitchell has proven himself. I think Terry and Arnold, another big-time player, would be stylistically out of all these guys. I think Arnold would be the best fit. Now, didn't pop off at the Combine. Also didn't have a bad Combine. Very similar to, like, Brian Branch last year. Brian Branch didn't test out the Combine, fell to the Lions in the second round, and if there was a redraft, he would go top 15. Easy. Can't just... Can't just I would say the only thing I was disappointed is that he's sub six feet tall. You know, for outside corner, it's always a safe projection that six feet plus is kind of what you're looking for. Uh, you got Nate Wiggins, a little bit more of a man. I don't think he'd be the best fit for a Vic Fangio scheme, but 428, height, weight, speed, prototypical size. I think he can make it work. And then you have the great white hope here in Cooper DeGene. I think, honestly, you know, Mitchell's going to be gone. Mitchell is not going to 22, and I don't think Philly would trade up. There is a slight chance Arnold falls just because he didn't pop off at the combine but still let's be honest that's that's very casual to assume a player's gonna you know just fall off the face of the earth on their draft projection because of uh, and it wasn't even a bad combine it was just an above average one he's probably gonna be gone I honestly I think DeGene 
fits a Vic Fangio defense very much so. I think the fact that my comp for him is is Minka Fitzpatrick, maybe more of a corner. Minka came out of Alabama, just did everything with the defense. I think that is where you get in Cooper Gene. He can play slot, he can play safety, he can play outside corner. Now, I would say the slight risk with Eugene is that there's a shot that he's not going to be an outside corner. If you're drafting a guy at 22 as a corner, you want them to be an outside corner. You want them to be a guy that can grow and develop to that guy can play on an island and be a shot down corner one. I, You know, could be. He absolutely could be. I'd love to see the pro day. Should test well. It's expected that he will test well. But I think outside of that, though, just stylistically, a great fit for a Vic Fangio defense. I just think the problem with saying, like, we're going to solve our corner issue in the draft is after that, I mean, Kool-Aid McKinstry... Don't hate it. I just I need to see him test to be like get that final check mark. But I like the tape. A little concerned about the straight line speed and athleticism. There are some value picks a little bit later on at corner, but I mean we're not really talking about value picks right now. Like Jerry and Jones could be a nickel uh, at a Florida State. Uh, Elijah Jones at a Boston College tested really really well. I love Dwight McLaughlin late out of Arkansas. Uh, played <laughs> always felt like he had his best game against my Florida Gators. But just the concern is that none of the top corners are going to be available at 22. And if that's the case, then you almost like uh, the Eagles will be pressured in to making a trade for a luxurious steed, which I definitely think until, you know, we spend a lot of money and it just doesn't make financial sense, I think the Eagles need to be one of the top teams in that potential tag and trade scenario with Kansas City. So now, understanding that we got about $40 million of salary cap, how I would spend it after kind of breaking everything down. I would, one, I'd bring back Big V on the offensive line. I think it's going to be very cheap. I think it's a guy that knows the system. I think it's a guy that Stoutland loves. I think he can wear a lot of hats. He can be a swing tackle and back a right tackle. He can see if he can compete for that right guard spot with Tyler Steen. I think you're going to get a lot more for your player than what it's going to cost. I would bring back DeAndre Swift. Even though I'm absolutely here for the Saquon Barkley discussion, I think DeAndre Swift earned a contract. And I honestly, given the market, given the other running backs are there, I think he is going to be the best player given their contract, in relation to their contract. I think other guys are getting more money. I think he'll be a little bit more affordable, which is absolutely what we need to be in the conversation for. I would also look at Levante David. I think given the fact that even if we go grab a linebacker, I'm personally not sold on the Kobe Dean being a starter, even though I think that might be a little different than how Philadelphia... I, I think in a perfect world, the Kobe Dean is competing for one of the linebacker spots, not giving it outright. So I'd bring Levante David in as a veteran. I would still look towards the draft earlier on to bring in like a Peyton Wilson if we can go get him. And then you have Nicobe Dean, and then you've got healthy competition for the inside of the defense that was such a struggle last year for the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to put an asterisk next to the Jerry Snee trade because that's just me just assuming Philadelphia can get everybody. And it takes two to tango. I don't know what Kansas City's going to look for, but I definitely would say that is easily our best avenue at going out and getting a corner. I would get Justin Simmons would be the, the big expensive piece that we land, even though it is another one of the situations with the market right now at safety with Xavier McKinney, Cam Curl, Chauncey Garner johnson Jeremy Chin, Jordan Whitehead, Quandre Diggs. Like, there is a gigantic market there. I think knowing how Justin Simmons plays in a Vic Fangio defense, we want that. And then if you bring him in, it'll be him and Reed Blankenship as your starters, and then you have Sidney Brown kind of being your floater as, like, a general DB, maybe challenges for nickel. It just it, another, It's just a big question mark for the Eagles is how they view and how good Isaiah Rogers is going to be. Because Isaiah Rogers was really good last time he played with the Colts, but a year off football... It's still a question mark. I would bring back Brayden Mann as our punter. I thought he did a pretty good job. I would bring back Brandon Graham as our uh, edge depth. Let him close out the career here in Philadelphia. And then it is time for all hands on deck for a draft. Let's get into seven rounds. Let's absolutely crush it. All right, let's do a mock draft. Hopefully no one weird and unrealistic is available at 22. I've done two quick run-throughs, and Brock Bowers and Jane Daniels both have been there. Alrighty, so my tra I'm not going to trade back. I mean, honestly, I could trade back at this spot. 22 to get... I don't think we can do that, though. 27. No, I mean, that is outstanding haul to get those amount of picks. But that's, so that, that's the number one thing that can just derail a fun mock draft. Is I just get an insane amount of draft picks after trading all the way back. So, look at this at pick 22. If this is the board... Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this board being available, but I will say the corner market being depleted makes it a little easier. You look at the edge. Chop Robinson usually is a name. That, that'd be pretty fun, but he just went to Miami. So you got Byron Murphy who could play D-tackle, which is a Tier 2 need for me, getting some uh, D-line depth. It's pretty good. 
I just think when it comes to the defensive line, I don't know if I'm on, by myself on this. Because we know how Roach likes to build the team. But, like, let's let Milton Williams be a starter. Like, Milton Williams is flashed. I think he's earned the right to be a starter. I want to see Milton Williams, Jordan Davis, and Jalen Carter. I want them to be starting. I don't want them to continue to be like they're in, they're out, they rotate. Like, let them fucking start. Let's see what we got in them. And if you go out and use a big-time investment here in Byron Murphy, that just clogs it up again. And he's a good player. I wouldn't hate the pick. Or even Johnny Newton. Both those guys are fits for our, our new Vic Fangio front, even though it's not going to be that drastically different. Um, wouldn't hate it. Wouldn't be where I would where I'd love to go. Uh, you look at wide receiver, Donnie Mitchell there, height, weight, speed. Not really what we need. Brock Bowers went off the board. Now, I will say Jackson Powers Johnson if we just want to keep Cam Jurgens at center, and then you, or sorry, Cam Jurgens back to guard, there's a hell of a center to, to be a replacement. I just think you know Kelsey gave the seal of approval on Jurgens. He was drafted. You know we don't know what he looks like at center because he hasn't played. And I think if Stoutland gave him the thumbs up for us to draft him when we did, for Kelsey give him the thumbs up, who are we to say we need to get another center? However, looking at the players that are available. I hate to it's I hate to fall into the Howie Roseman trap, but the, the two best guys here at 22, you have Amarius Mims, who is the perfect, perfect pick to sit behind Lane Johnson and and become his successor. He's only played like eight games at Georgia, but he has he's a ridiculous athlete. 6'8. He's built like Jordan Mylotta. Philadelphia is the perfect landing spot for him because he's a guy that you can't really throw to the wolves right away. But we're going to go Troy Fautanu. Because, here's why. He's projected to be a guard-tackle hybrid. So I think, in a, in a perfect way, he's going to be able to play right guard right away. Which we have guard as one of our Tier 1 needs. He's going to be a Day 1 guard. He's a value pick of that spot. He's a guy that most people right now are projected to go you know, Cincinnati, the rank, like in the teens. The fact that he's still there at 22 is value. But he would be a day one upgrade at right guard, especially if the team's not in love with Steen. And Steen is a guy that can play guard tackle, very much like Fautano. So getting guys that can play a bunch of different spots on the offense, it's not a sexy spot. But now that Kelsey's retired and Jurgens, who was a solid guard, there is a hole there. And we all know Philadelphia, we only go as far as our offensive line will take us. And there is an idea. I don't, I'm not going to be honest with you. I don't love this pick because I have this idea in my head that Jeff Stoutland is so good that we should be able to get value guys at offensive line that we churn out to make starters. What We shouldn't be spending blue chip picks on the offensive line because Stoutland is good enough to get your Mylottas, your seventh round picks that turn into franchise tackles. But also, make his life a little easier. Get someone like Fautano who balled out at the combine. He's probably the biggest needle mover trending in the right direction from the offensive line group at the combine. The fact that he can play guard, the fact that, hell, he could be the successor to Lane Johnson as well. Two hats. He could be guard for now. And then when Lane decides to hang him up two, three years down the road, he could very well slide out and be our next right tackle. Uh, I think there was just too much value there. And honestly, I, I almost would just say there was no value any other position for the Philadelphia Eagles. Maybe we could have traded back. But if we're going to stay there, get a day one starter and complete the offensive line. So now we're here at pick 50. And then look at our needs. We're still looking for an outside corner. Didn't get that. We're still looking for a slot wide receiver. And we have those on the board. I'm going to go get Ricky Pearsall. If you see, if you want to see like some of the best highlight reel catches in all of college football, you go look at Ricky Pearsall. Tested well the combine. 4-4. Four, 40-inch four, vertical. Florida Gator. You know how Roseman's going to want to jump all over that. I think he can play on the outside as well. But I can tell you firsthand as a Florida Gator fan, I mean, between him and Corley, I'd be I'd be running that card up. There, He's a day one starter for us in the slot. Cost-efficient slot wide receiver. And now the offense, now suddenly we just, you know, our right guard, starter, locked in. Slot wide receiver, starter, locked in. Even with that, you can still bring back Zacchaeus as a valuable depth piece as well. It's not going to cost you an arm and leg. Then at pick 53, we're going to go and get Peyton Wilson, the linebacker from NC State. In our minds... He is checked off the medical. He is good to go. There is no concerns. He's going to be able to come in and rock and roll. Six foot four, 235 pounds, ran a 4 4, can cover, can sideline the sideline, can make plays in the backfield. I, he's the kind of guy that would be a day one starter. Absolutely. Now you're looking at the value there at 97. Jeremiah Trotter's still there. I, I don't think that's necessarily where we need to go. I think we got to look at the running back market. And there's still immense value 
at running back. This There's no way that it's going to look like this in 97. I'll tell you that right now. Now, Jonathan Brooks is coming off an injury at Texas. Honestly, I probably should have traded back. <laughs> this is kind of how it's... This is kind of how it's looking. Outside corner, TJ Tampa, 6'2". Max Melton tested really well, but might be more of a nickel. Kyrie Jackson, 6'3", outside. But again, this is the problem with the corners. If we don't get one at 22, I'm looking at these guys, and like I'd, I'd rather Keely Ringo get the opportunity ahead of some of these younger players. So, continuing on here for the Philadelphia Eagles, we could look at edge rusher rotation. Kamara tested well. Cedric Johnson, two guys that tested well at the combine. You have Xavier Thomas right here, five-star recruit. Uh, he's played in college literally forever. Like, I think he was... I was still in college when he started at, at Clemson. Um, Wingo had good tape. I haven't seen a lot, but I'm hearing people say that he had really good tape out of LSU. And he would be, you know, a 3-4 defensive end in our scheme. Um, Theo Johnson, the Canadian, had a perfect 10 Raz. Can always make the argument. You need depth behind Dallas Goddard, who has, unfortunately, kind of got an injury tag. I, I think honestly at this spot though we look at the running backs. If these are the guys that are, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to go with the. I'm going to get my guy here. There's I highly, highly doubt that Benson and Brooks are still there. They're going to be gone. They're going to be gone before this spot. So I'm going to go get my power back in Braylon Allen. I just think that is stylistically what I want to see the Eagles do, because in my head, in our this draft is based off of the the signings that we got in free agency. So we bring DeAndre Swift. We're not going to need a Benson or Brooks, right? You bring back DeAndre Swift, unless it's like a one-year deal and you want to look for a rookie that can be the successor long-term. I think you bring him back, DeAndre Swift, like two, three-year deal. So stylistically, we have DeAndre Swift and we have Kenny Gainwell. None of those guys bring a lot of power. None of those guys run inside, even though, you know, DeAndre Swift had a little bit after his game. You bring a 235-pound monster, we get that LeGarrette Blunt style back in our backfield. You get that guy that we had with Jordan Howard a little bit. I feel like that's what we'll be missing here in Philadelphia. And I think a lot more realistic than the other names that are available. He will be there, still there at pick 97. That is where I would go. So now we have, you know, kind of checking things off. We got our slot. We got our guard. We got our running back. We got our inside linebacker. We got, I will still say, our tackle because we brought in Big V. We got a punter because we brought back Braden Mann. So now we're still looking in terms of needs. We still need corner. We could go D-line, someone that could play on the front three. We can go inside linebacker, bring in a third one. And I'm telling you right now, we're going to go. I'm going Trevin Wallace. Big-time freak athlete. Surprised he's actually still on the board there. So we'll bring him in to be competition there at linebacker. He will compete, obviously, in a perfect goal. we got Levante David and Peyton Wilson. Thin, because you know, there's going to be a lot more pressure. We're going to be a lot more stressed out thin for our depth at linebacker in a Fangio scheme. The more guys you can get, the better. Trust. Also, at this spot, you're starting to look at guys that can contribute on special teams. And Wallace is absolutely the kind of athlete that can do that. Now, the value for me right now, we got back-to-back -back picks here, is corner. So I'm going to go Jerry and Jones, who is projected to be a little bit more. He's six feet tall, very good athlete out of Florida State. I'm also going to go and get Dwight McLaughlin. There is our depth. These are the guys that are going to be competing with Eli Ricks. These are going to be the guys that are But I think you get Jones in. Now you're starting to talk about these guys that might get thrown on the practice squad a little bit. But these are two of my favorite corners this year's draft class. And a lot of value to be able to get them at 170 and 171. I will say, though, absolute bummer that Jacob Cowing just went because that is a guy that I would have drafted immediately. A lot of pro comps right now to him to Deshaun Jackson. Very similar Raz, very similar testing. Um, you got Garendo here, who had an insane combine. 220 pounds, had, I don't know, even know what his Raz is. Like almost a perfect 10. We want to continue to add some bodies there uh, at, at the running back room, which, I mean, we could potentially... But seeing that where we're at as a roster, you would like to grab a safety here. Look at the guys that are available. Hmm. Interesting. Not the best value, but I mean, we're a list late. Um, hmm. I mean, you get the Georgia Bulldog there and Tyke Smith. Oladipo is more of like a box guy. Taylor, he's a guy that has some hype right now. I'm just not super familiar with his game. I would say, honestly, at this spot, uh, you have uh, Carly's from Mizzou, who tested very well, but a lot of people think he might be making the switch inside the linebacker. And if that's the case, Tyler Owens jumped out the gym, also doesn't think space is real. I would I would say more so just knowing, going by players I've actually seen. I would go, we'll go Tyke Smith there. It's a little bit of depth in the safety room. And then we're going to finish it out. Honestly, at this spot, let's go BPA. Who can we get? 
that would be an absolute dog. And if that is the case, looking at who's, I mean, if these are the guys that are still available, honestly, I would just pivot right away and get Rosengarden at tackle. So that way there, if you want to keep Fatano at guard, make him a lifelong guard for the Philadelphia Eagles, Rosengarten, which is immense value still there at 189, tested well at the Combine, had some pretty goddamn good tape, I believe at the Senior Bowl, played well for Washington. I believe he was a big-time recruit too, four-star, one of the top tackles uh, in his recruiting class. You feel really good about this draft here for the Philadelphia Eagles in comparison to what we did and how we furnished the team in free agency. I will say, though, I mean, kind of just recapping a little bit, I don't think Rosengarten would still be on the board there. Everyone else makes sense. You know, we, we, we showed resistance at 97. Braden Allen, you know, if you told me actually at 97 that Trey Benson and Jordan, uh, John, Jordan uh, Jonathan Brooks are still going to be there, I probably would pivot off of the fact that I love Allen and be like, you know, Benson, probably a little bit better player at this spot. I just, there's just no way they're going to be there. Um, I mean, after how Wallace tested at the Combine, Wallace and Jones tested about the Combine, so maybe they're going to be, you might want to shave 20, 30 spots off those projections potentially. But I think everyone here is available. And I think understanding that we didn't get the best role at 22, right? It wasn't one of those top corners. Cooper DeGene wasn't there. Um... One of the fun edge rushers wasn't there. Chop Robinson wasn't there. I think you can do a lot worse. And it also stays true to how Howie Roseman likes to build his teams. Because I think you furnish that with what we did in free agency by going out, bringing in Big V, bringing back DeAndre Swift, looking at Levante David, bringing in Justin Simmons. I think we did a job here. I think we did a great job here. So I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comment section below. You think we nailed it? What would you have done different here in this mock off season? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Obviously, with free agency frenzy heating up, we'll be dropping reaction videos all week long on the channel of the Big Time Moves, especially Philadelphia Eagle Moves. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. And until next time, it's your boy C4. Say peace out, love you. Have a good one.